making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. This is a very exciting video. This is the video I get to announce what my next solar and battery project is. Quite a lot's gone on already to do with the project. Uh, I've chosen the installer, we've designed what we're gonna install, I've agreed an amount of money that we're gonna be paying for it. So all of those things have been done, but the reason why I haven't been sharing it so far is quite simply, I haven't committed. We haven't got to the stage where we were absolutely 100% going ahead. So until I got to that stage, I didn't want to start sharing with you. Now that I'm certain, now that we're definitely going ahead, now is the time I start to share with you what's going on. So what are we doing? And a lot of you online have been saying, you know, are you putting a solar fence in? Are you putting a carport in? Are you adding some solar panels to a carport? Or am I turning my garden into a solar field? There's lots of space out there. So what am I doing? What's my next solar and battery project? Well, what do you do? What do you do when you've installed solar and battery? You know how good it is. You absolutely love it. It's reduced your energy bills and you're getting a credit every month. So you're getting paid more for your export than what you're actually using. So energy bills are just a thing in the past for us right now with export prices the way they are. Might not always be that good, but at the moment they are. So what, what do you do next? What does the ultimate solar person get himself for Christmas? Well, what you actually do is you share the love of solar, don't you? You don't just keep it all to yourself. When you've run out of things to do for yourself, which I, I guess I sort of have, then it's sharing that love. It's spreading it. It's getting another solar uh, array somewhere else, helping someone else. So my daughter and son-in-law, they've uh, moved house several years ago. They've uh, done their house up a little bit and they were sort of anti-solar uh, and electric cars, I think sort of a little bit to start with, didn't really understand them, didn't really want them. And gradually over time, their views have changed. They're on their second electric car now. And my daughter prefers electric cars to petrol or diesel because she hates petrol stations. And uh, my son-in-law's family, they've had solar and battery for a while and they've seen that their energy bills have reduced nicely. They obviously know from my videos and what I share with them that uh, we don't have energy bills anymore. So solar and battery are, is a very positive thing. But for my daughter and her family, th things have changed that energy bills have become higher, bigger, a bit bigger proportion of the money they spend. I, I guess with um, petrol and diesel not being spent anymore, then what they see is their fuel bill is all with the electric side. So they see this bigger electric bill now, now that they've gone electric, so which makes them think, well, if everyone else is saving on their energy bills by putting solar in and our energy bills are now high, their energy bills are between 200 and 300 pounds a month. They might even be more than 300 pounds a month some months. So it's a, it's a significant amount of money that they spend on energy. So they're very keen now to look at solar and batteries. So they've got to that point where they knew it made sense. They can see other people are benefiting from it and they've got these high energy bills and they don't want them. So what do you do? But they're younger. They're in that situation where, you know, they're spending all of their money on their lives as they are. And I remember being back at that age as well in your late 20s. It's a case of spending everything you have. You're out enjoying yourself. You're going on the holidays. You're buying everything. In today's consumer age, you know, how can you not have everything? So to have all these things and do all of these things, you've got finite budgets. And with high electricity bills, how can you install solar? Well, I've always said, how can you afford not to? Knowing that it's gonna save you money in the future, how can you afford not to? And it's still making that decision to spend on solar and batteries now, rather than other things, to stop buying one thing and buy something else instead, buy solar and batteries, which enables you to have lower bills to do things. And I guess that's just the hurdle. It's, it's saying no to a holiday or no to something else. And, I guess one day they would do it on their own um, because energy bills are going up and up and it would just become too big a problem to avoid. So they'd do it at some point. So I decided to say, let's sort of give it to you. Let's help you. Let's do the design. Let's get it, uh, let's get it going. And I'll contribute a significant chunk of the cost. What I didn't do though is say, I'll just pay for the whole thing. I'll put the whole thing in. Um, I was apprehensive that if there wasn't buy-in on their part, then it could go in and not be used, not be appreciated, not be noticed. And it's not the real, it's not the right way to do it. What I was hoping for is that they'd be more energy conscious, more thoughtful about how they used energy. And that obviously helps them in the future. 
So going solar and battery, once they had sufficient buy-in, which I recognise that they definitely had the buy-in, they knew their energy bills were too high, they've seen other people um, getting the benefits, and they said, we would like solar and battery, it's just that we can't afford it right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to help them and get them over that hurdle, they can't afford it right now. Um, I looked at 0% interest finance for them. But it's going to work out all right that I'm just going to pay a chunk for them and uh, they'll pay any remainder amount uh, for the system. So it's their system, they own it. And I, I guess that's one of the key things to say about this. Um, for me, the interest in doing this, the thing that makes these videos that I'm going to present to you very engaging and interesting is it's not a mini Nigel solution. It's not a mini EV puzzle solution. I'm not going to take all the things I've done and put it in their system. Um, and I'm, I then have control and I can you know, see how wonderful it is and I can make it just extremely good for them. That's, that's not what I need to do. What I need to do is use my experience, look at what I've done wrong, but then look at what they want from a system and how they are going to use energy and give them a technical solution that suits their needs, not mine. So I'm finding this very, very interesting to come at it from a completely different perspective with a completely different set of requirements other than I want to be economical, save energy bills, all of those things. It's just very, very interesting to see the contrast and the differences between what we're going to be installing for my daughter and son-in-law versus what we've installed here in Norfolk. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos taking you all the way from the start through the project to completion, um, talking about why we chose the installer we did, what about the design, what were the options, what did we go with, what the costs were, what the savings were, the installation, the obstacles to overcome, all, all of those things. But I'll break it down into parts so it's nice and simple to understand. So for anyone looking at installing solar, you know, like my daughter and son-in-law, it's if you're not aware of it, if, if you're not as into the subject as I am, then it must be daunting. Now, where do I start? What do I do? What's going to happen? What's involved in it? How much is it going to cost? So by doing this project from scratch, I think it's going to be very beneficial. Um, my project was quite complex and convoluted over a longer period of time. This one's going to be more succinct and it's going to be more suited to just about anybody and everybody out there. So I think it's going to be a really good project to share with you. And obviously my daughter thinks it's going to be a great project too, because they're going to get solar and batteries and lower energy bills. So they're over the moon. What a Christmas present. And it really is, you know, think about all the times that parents or grandparents uh, give money or give presents to their kids. It's, it's something we do all the time. You know, whether you're sending them to university and paying for it, whether you're uh, allowing them on a gap year and uh, funding that or helping them with driving lessons or their first car or deposit on the house. We're always trying to do something and give something to them, even if it's just generous Christmas presents. But they're like one off things, aren't they? You know, giving solar from my perspective, it's a really good gift because it keeps giving. It's going to be a benefit to them every single year. It's going to change their opinion of energy and help them on their journey. It's going to take away stress of energy bills and energy price rises. It's just a really, really positive thing to do that's going to last a long period of time. So the first stage of the project, making sure that there was buy-in from their part, making sure they really wanted it, making sure that they weren't going to be moving house in the next couple of years so that it all makes sense to be putting solar and batteries into their home. So once we got to that stage and it was all, yep, it's a case of working out who's going to do what. They didn't know what installers to use, who to go for. I think they'd looked at quotations and they were quite expensive coming in at between 15 and 20,000 pounds in that sort of mark. And it's really hard to know, you know, what do you need and what is the right level to spend and you know, what is appropriate for their needs. They didn't know those things. So for me to come in and take that over and add confidence to them, and also to be saying that they're not going to have to spend a lot of money on it. They're just very happy to let go and let, should we say, the professional <laughs> do his thing. So that's what we're doing. What is the first thing you do then after that, once you've got to the stage of I'm definitely doing it, I definitely want solar and batteries. What do you do? What's the very first thing? You know, what kit am I going to buy? How many solar panels am I going to get? No, you don't, you don't start there. You start with the installer. The installer is the first thing. You need to work out who's going to help you install uh, this solar and battery solution. 
mainly because the installer will help influence what you're going to install. There's no point in you working out, I want A, B and C, and then you find an installer that says, well, I can't do A and I can't do C, but I could do something different instead. So the installer is the person that's going to help you decide what you need, what's appropriate, what's cost effective. And that will influence what you go for because unfortunately, not very many installers offer you a blank sheet and let you do anything you want. They normally influence you to the things that they're comfortable installing. And there's good reasons for that. There's good reasons because they're confident about the warranties, the reliability, how well they work, how easy they install and the profitability for them, you know, making sure it's quick to install, easy to install and no hassle. They don't want support issues after the event and stuff. So all of those things which are positives to the installer are, you know, are positives to you as well. So choosing the installer first is the key thing that you have to do because that will help you determine what you're going to buy, what you're going to install and what's appropriate. So who have we gone for then? Who have we chosen to help us install this solar and battery solution over in Peterborough, Cambridgeshire? Feels like a drum roll coming on. Who have we gone for? Who have we chosen? It was 